Hi, this is Brian Fogarty, and this is a video for Chapter 12 of the book Quantitative Social Science Data with R, 2nd Edition. So in this video, which is the last of this chapter, we are going to look at outliers, leverage, and influential data points. So a assumption we make, which is really the case for any type of statistical analysis, um, I'm trying to think, yeah, pretty much any, is that we don't have any influential data points. Um, and so usually we'll have uh, outliers. Okay, so they're far away from, you know, generally think like they're far away from the rest of them. You know, one of these doesn't look like the other. Um, points that have leverage, which is points that affect the uh, regression line, the slope. Uh, but those those points could be right in the middle of of the observation, so it could be totally fine. Um, but influential data points are outliers that have leverage. So these are points that are artificially, if you will, changing the regression line. Um, so I like to think about this in a in a um, bivariate sense that. If we have a best fit line in a simple bivariate x y you know is there a point that is is pulling up the line or pulling down the line um on its own so if that's the case if we have influential data point then uh or data points then we should deal with them in some way the most common way is just actually to remove them um, but you shouldn't necessarily just throw them away you should take a look to see maybe why why there's a case so sorry why is the case that they're influential um so it could be that there it's informative to keep them in for some reason or maybe you want to treat them as special case or look at them individually something like that all right so um we're going to look at all three of these things at once um for leverage we need to we need to calculate a cut point to say i will uh, what, at what value would we say that points have leverage? All right. Um, there's sort of different versions of this. The one that I include in the in the text is uh, two times k plus one divided by n, where k is the number of predictors. Um, plus one is for the constant. So some people just some people just say two k and say k includes the constant. So we have uh, two. T oh, sorry. We need to be explicit here. Two times three, because we have three predictors, plus one. All right. And then we're going to divide it by the number of observations. These are the number of observations that are in our um, regression. Now, because R, just like a lot of statistical packages, use listwise uh, deletion for, mis for missing values, we just need to double check the number of observations. It's not going to make a huge difference, you know, if when it's the case that we have a lot of observations. So here we actually have um, 6,973 that are in, um, that are part of our regression. So three had been removed. Okay, so what we could say is any point that has a, a hat value, a leverage uh, value. It's not the right word for it. a hat value a point zero zero one one any one uh greater than or equal to has high leverage um, again we might not care it might not matter all right so we are going to use a function called influence index plot that is from the car um, package to look at all these things at once so influence right there okay influence index plot and we're going to do model one and then we're going to specify what we want um so we're going to do so we did comma vars equals and then c which is again our concatenate function we're going to do studentized residuals for the outliers hat for leverage and then cook for our influential data points all right, so this is going to create a plot for us. It's going to take a second. I'm going to click here and then drag it just so we can see it better. 
All right. Second. Okay, so the top plot here is studentized residuals. This is for the outliers. So the rule of thumb is points that are plus minus two here um, are considered outliers. So yeah, so there are a bunch of outliers. Um, what about hat values and leverage? This is this is our leverage. So what do you say? 0 0.01, 0 0.0011. So this would be 0 0.002. So it's somewhere around here. I feel like, yeah, there are a bunch of points with leverage. Okay, and then we go down to Cook's distance. So there's different formulas for this. Um, man, this, I've, I've seen lots of things. So what I've stuck to is if we have a large number of observations, which we do here, if there's a Cook's distance value, Cook's D value of one, then that's, that, that, that would be considered a, a influential data point. There are some here though you might worry about because because they are large, but they're not. You know this one, uh, three five one six, is showing up as like an extreme outlier, but it's not showing up really with with leverage. Um, so it's sort of like well you know is is it the problem I don't know. Um, but I, what I conclude from this is that we don't have a problem with influential data points, so, so we don't need to do anything. Um, in, the, in the chapter, um, I go through looking at points of interest to say like, okay, so this 3516, it's, you know, what's going on there? Like, why is there a problem or a potential problem here? Why, the, why is it standing out? Um, cause sometimes you can catch weird things, like there might be some weird error or something like that, or it, it could be, you know, in surveys, sometimes people just answer randomly. So you can create like, who is this person? And it's like, whatever profile you come up with, you're like, that person should not exist. No, no one has that combination of, of opinions and preferences. Um, anyway, so, so yeah, so I look, I go through, you know, looking at this to see like. It, you know, is there is there an issue? All right, so that's it for this video. Real, real quick, look to see if there's uh, any influential data points. Um, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. But before we go, let's run our markdown file. Okay, again, I would say run. Let's knit our markdown file. Hopefully, there's no errors. This should be fairly quick, although the CR plots come take a little bit to render. And I think I might be getting hung up there. Nope. Okay, so it went through them. That was that pause. And we'll just wait a second and see if there's any issues. There we go. Alright. So we got our document here and it's saved uh, as a PDF in our working directory. Alright, so now <laughs> thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.